I'm praying God will bless you today, wherever you are, however you are, in this remarkably unprecedented season in human history. May you find Him holding on to you. I believe that there is always the possibility of a stubborn hope. In fact, Jesus urges us to always pray and never lose hope. And if you could use a reminder of where to find hope, hang around for just a few minutes. If for some reason that doesn't seem relevant to where you are today, let us know how to pray for you. Just post your prayer needs on the page there. But if you'd like to stay around for, I'm guessing, seven or eight minutes, I think that Jesus will help us. He will help us find hope. In his book, The Grand Essentials, Ben Patterson tells about a submarine that sank off the coast of Massachusetts. The entire crew was trapped, and every effort was made to rescue the sailors, but every effort failed. And near the end of the ordeal, a deep-sea diver heard tapping on the steel wall of the sunken sub, and he placed his helmet against the vessel, and he realized he was hearing a sailor tap out a message in Morse code, a question. And that question was, is there any hope? Are you asking that question? Are you a single mom who has no resources? Are you an ailing man who has no strength? Are you a businessman with no answers? Are you left because of this storm wondering, is there any hope? I have a friend who found an answer to that question, Jonathan McComb. The McCombs were an all-American family, two young, beautiful children, a terrific marriage. Jonathan worked ranches and Laura sold pharmaceuticals. They were God-fearing. They were happy. They were busy. They were carefree. But then came the storm. Rain was in the forecast, but a -a once-in-a-century flood, no one saw it coming that Memorial Day weekend. The river crested at 30 feet and roared through the South Texas hill country, taking homes and cars and bridges with it. Jonathan and his family sought safety on the second floor of their weekend cabin, but safety was was nowhere to be found. The house was yanked off its foundations. And they found themselves clutching a mattress and riding this sudden whitewater river. Jonathan survived but no one else did. When my wife, Deanlin, and I visited Jonathan in the hospital, he could hardly move from the injuries. But the broken ribs and the hip were nothing compared to the broken heart. He tried to talk, but he couldn't. He mustered only tears. A couple of weeks later, Remarkably, Jonathan found the courage and strength to speak at the funeral for his wife and his two children. It seemed like the entire city of Corpus Christi, Texas, was present. The church had no empty seats. The church had no dry eyes. And for well over half an hour, Jonathan described his wife and his children. He described a particular verse that meant a lot to him. I'm reading now from his sermon notes. A particular verse that I have loved over the years has helped me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not on your own understanding. I have no explanation for why such a tragic event like the flood takes place and lives are lost. But I know that God is not going to give us anything we cannot handle. I know we're here for a little while, but trust me, If I could have every bone broken in my body to have them back, I would do it, but it is not our call. Yes, I know this entire tragedy is horrible, and I have been angry, upset, confused, and left to wonder why. I've cried enough tears to fill that river up a hundred times, but I know I can't stay angry or upset or confused or continue to ask myself why, because I will find out that answer when my time comes and I'm reunited with them in heaven. But trust me, that will be the first question I ask. You know, I took note of the number of times that Jonathan used the phrase, I know. He said, I know 
that God is not going to give us anything we can't handle. Then he said, I know that we're here for a little while. He said, I know this entire tragedy is horrible, but I know I will be reunited with them in heaven. Now, Jonathan was not dismissive. He was not naive. He was not pretending to, that nothing happened to break his heart. His, his faith wasn't, I don't know, what's the word, fluffy or dismissive? Not a bit. In fact, his faith, his faith was the deepest kind. He knew the tragedy was horrible. He knew the storm was severe. But he knew in the midst of the storm, he could still find hope. He found no easy answers. He promoted no simple solutions. But he did this. He made a deliberate decision to build his life on God's promises. And and Jesus encourages us to do the same. He encouraged his followers in Luke 18, 1, to always pray and never lose hope. My friend, may you do the same. May you always pray and never lose hope. I pray that God will stir within you this this stubborn hope, this belief that we, though we don't know today why so many things have happened, we will know someday, and that God will take the tears of our hearts and He will redeem them into a waterfall of grace. You know, I got a card, Dean and I did, got a card just a few days ago from Jonathan. Uh, He has found a wonderful new love of his life and he and Monica have been blessed by God with a new baby. And as I looked at that picture, I thought, you know, God keeps his promises. Joy, a sorrow may come with the night, but joy comes. It did for Jonathan and it will for you. God bless you, friend.